welcome everybody. We are so excited to have you here. It is a uh, good day to be a lion, as always. This is a historic day for the University of North Alabama <clears throat> and the future of our uh, basketball program. I'd like to thank the uh, media, our staff, our student athletes for taking time and sharing your time as we introduce uh, Coach Pujo as our new basketball coach. I'd like to take this opportunity also to uh, say thanks to uh, Dr. Kitts, our university president, and Marty Abrams, our, our chairman of the Board of Trustees, for being here. Their support has been unrelenting as we go forward into this transition to Division I. And anytime you, you make a decision uh, to hire a, a, a coach, it, it's, always no, it's always good to know that you're supported by your president, by your board, and that they share the same vision of a culture of excellence. And so I appreciate all your support and for being there for us. Uh, I'd like to take a few moments to say thanks to the Fuho family for coming. It's great to have you all here. Welcome to the Lion Nation, and I hope that you'll feel a part of our family also. I'm going to keep my uh, comments brief in nature because uh, I want you to get to know Tony. I want to talk a little bit, first of all, about the process that we went through. We had nine members of a committee that came together three weeks ago to review all the applicants that came through the uh, process through our HR department. The nine members were Brock Beck, Sherry Kinnamer, Tim Morgan, Ron Patterson, Steve Pierce, a board member for us, Johnny Simpson, who is the uh, president of our Sportsman's Club, Will Trapp, another board member, Todd Vardaman, and Chris Walker. And those nine individuals did a wonderful job in sorting through over 70 applicants. The, the pool was amazingly deep, and, and they went through every application and to make sure that, that we brought in the right person. Early in the process, we talked about the three components that we look for in every head coaching hire. We talk about character, we talk about the ability to recruit, and we talk about their pedigree. And, and so as they started to sort through the resumes, as they started to go through the 70 applicants, or 70 plus applicants, uh, there became a, a group that really came to the top, about 10, and then through phone interviews, some meetings, uh, they narrowed it down to four and did a wonderful job. Uh, the four candidates that we brought to campus were, were really high quality individuals. And uh, we talked early in the process about every hire has a life cycle. You know, the University of North Alabama is in a cycle right now where we're transitioning to Division I. And we know that basketball has to be a lead for us in that transition. So we're in a, a certain time period in our development as an institution. And we know coaches go through life cycles. And so not, not every job is fit for every candidate, but we did know this, that we weren't going to be, uh, apologize for who we were as the University of North Alabama. We have something really special here, all right? The, the purple and gold nation, uh, you guys have made us who we are, and, and the tradition that we have in the past, we look forward to honoring that as we go into the future. And so we weren't going to be apologetic. We were going to say, you know what, we are a Division II institution transitioning to Division I, and we're really proud about that. And there's going to be the right fit as we move forward. We know that through the interview process, we brought four individuals to campus. And there was one that really stood out to the committee, uh, to everybody that had a, a, a part in the interview process. I know Dr. Roden uh, spent time taking people around the community. Uh, Coach Watson was involved in the process. And we just had a, a lot of people involved. And, and one one person really came out ahead in everybody's eyes, and I get to introduce him today as our new head basketball coach, so I'm really excited about that. Tony Pujo is here, and his career is marked with success, and that success comes because of a lot of hard work, all right, and because of the sacrifices that his family's made, and I hope he, he, he talks a little bit about that today as he uh, introduces himself. As a high school coach in Miami, he won 84% of his games. Uh, out of 296 games, he won 250 as a head coach. So we know he has a pedigree, uh, and he knows how to put the, the pieces together for championship caliber teams. Of nine years of head coaching experience at the high school level in Florida, he won three state championships. And so we, we knew that he checked that box as far as his pedigree. Everywhere he's been, Appalachian State to VCU to Alabama to Wyoming, they've all experienced success. Uh, and his fingerprints are all over the program. But what's really set him apart, and the two things I want to talk about today, 
all right, is that during the process, he demonstrated a strong desire to be here. Okay, We weren't just another job for him. We weren't just a, a place to apply and he's going to apply ten places and maybe get one. He never indicated that. He wanted to be here. And so as we started going through the process, I believe that not only did we find a person who wanted to be here, but he prepared to be here. All right? And I would like to say that we chose him, and we did, all right? but I want to say that he chose us. He really wanted to be here. And, and that, that spoke volumes as we started looking at who we wanted to hire. You will find that he is very passionate about the University of North Alabama. The second item that kind of set him apart is during the interview process, he spoke in terms that were significant. Right? A lot of coaches will, will come and give you the buzzwords about how they can be successful, but there's a difference between being successful and being significant. And he talked in terms of being significant, using terms like culture he wants to create. He talked about being a good teammate among our athletic department staff members. He talked about being an impact on young lives. He talked about bringing honor to his family name. He talked about being fearless in the face of adversity. You know, and all this is, is happening just in general conversation. And so, and how his, the, the other thing that he brought up was how his life experiences has, has prepared him to be the head coach, not of any basketball program, but the basketball program here at the University of North Alabama. And so as we embark in our future, I'm really excited. I think it's going to be a great chapter in our history at UNA with our men's basketball program. I believe we are hiring a difference maker. I believe that he is the right leader for our men's basketball program. I believe he understands the impact that he has on, on the lives of young men. I think by hiring Tony, we send a clear message that the University of North Alabama is going into this transition with the mindset to do it the right way and to do it and establish a culture of excellence. And so please join me in welcoming to the podium our seventh head men's basketball coach at the University of North Alabama, Mr. Tony Pujol. If you don't mind, I'm going to take this in for just a little bit. Um, I can't tell you how excited and honored I am to be your coach here at the University of North Alabama. The enthusiasm, the energy that has been demonstrated to my family and to myself has been just remarkable. We cannot wait to be a part of this wonderful community. My thank yous. Um, a lot of people say that this journey began back in April of 1992 when I took my first high school job as a head basketball coach at a small private school in Miami. And I tell you that this journey began in September 3rd, 1961, when two courageous people, my parents, fled from Cuba, left an oppressed and communist country so that they can come to a country with, where there's freedom and opportunity and not only present opportunity for themselves, but for their children and for their children's children. So I thank them. To Dr. Kitts, Mark Linder, Todd, the committee, the search committee, and the board, thank you for your trust. I will not take this historic opportunity for granted, I promise. To the coaches that have molded my life in coaching, Coach Allen Edwards, the head coach at Wyoming, he'll tell you that when we began coaching together in, at VCU that I was his mentor. Little does he know that he's mentored me, and I'm eternally grateful to him for the impact not only as, that he's made in my life, but in the life of my family. To Coach Anthony Grant, whose work ethic and attention to detail is second to none. And I learned tremendous valuable lessons from him. To Coach Houston Fancher, 
the coach that gave me my first opportunity to coach at the Division I level. What he taught me was surround yourself with good people and just watch how special things happen. And then lastly, but not least, Coach Frank Martin. Coach Martin had a tremendous impact when I first started coaching. And what I took from him was the way that he related to his players and the passion in which he coached with. And there's no doubt I stole a, a page out of that book. To my family. In our profession, we tend to be absentee dads sometimes, and absentee moms. And it takes a strong, in my case, I have a strong family that has sacrificed tremendously for me to be here. And I'm very thankful. From my youngest daughter, Mia, who will probably, she's gonna probably wanna push me out of the way and she wants to do this interview. Um, my middle daughter, Kristen, who is a freshman at Wyoming and uh, possibly looking into transferring to the Lion Nation. And to my eldest daughter, Casey, who is a junior at the University of Alabama in Tuscaloosa. Oh, by the way, Casey, Roar Lions. <laughs> <laughs> and then to my best friend, my confidant, who has been on this journey with me since the beginning. To my wife, Miley, thank you, and I love you. Your team, it will be our goal to provide the kind of basketball program that you will be proud of and a style of play that will, excite, that, that will bring excitement to our fan base. Our style will also complement the rich tradition that is UNA basketball. To our former players that played here, you, you all never need an invitation, ever. Our doors are always open. This is home. We always want you to be home. So if you ever want to come, we ever want to be at a game, at a practice, or if you ever just want to walk in to, to my office, by all means, you're always welcome. I also feel like I need to thank all the former coaches that have built such a solid foundation that we know as UNA, basket, UNA basketball. From the trailblazer, Coach Flowers, Coach Billingham, Coach Bill E. Jones, Coach Bill Jones, who happened to get a national championship in, in 1979. And by the way, I had an opportunity to speak with Mrs. Jones, and I want you to know that for me, that was a privilege and an honor. I want you to know that. Thank you very much for spending that time with me. And by the way, you're also invited at any, with anything. You, I, I, know, I know you know more than, than I know, so we're, we're gonna spend some time together. To Coach Elliott, who I happened to spend some time on the phone with as well. And again, another person who set a solid foundation here at the university by winning a national championship in 91. And Coach Champagne, for, for being not only an outstanding coach, but a tremendous member of this community. I wanna thank them. To all our boosters, students, and Lions fans that adore this program and UNA Athletics, we are gonna need your positive energy. I challenge you to create the greatest fan base in the country. Fill every single seat and support our student athletes. You have one chance at a first impression, folks. And as we transition into Division I, I wanna make Flowers Hall an absolute nightmare for our opponents. Our energy, our passion, our spirit must completely overwhelm our competition. Now what's our goal? What's our mission? Our goal and mission is to create an environment where these young men grow as people first. I want you all to know that 
I'm your coach. My responsibility is to make sure that all of you succeed in life. That's my main focus. We want to build the person. The second thing we're going to do is build academic success because we understand, our staff is going to understand, and I know our administration and our school understands that this has the greatest impact in the quality of their lives. And then last but not least, be the best basketball player possible. Our words, gentlemen, our words and our actions need to mesh. We are we got to have the mindset that we are getting 1% better every day. Because if we do that, by the end of the year, you will be 365% better. Now, expectations. I'm sure you have expectations for our basketball program. Rest assured that I have higher expectations for what we are about to accomplish. There has never been a game that I've coached in that I, have that I, that I didn't want to win. But we are a process-oriented team. And what do I mean by that? When I ask players what are their goals, they'll say, well, I remember in high school, every kid wanted to play in the NBA. Every kid wanted to be the outstanding basketball player. Well, those are results. Winning championships is a result. We want to focus in on the daily habits. So our goals are to bring a positive attitude and enthusiasm daily. Come focused and prepared to get better every day. Those are our goals. Be accountable to one another, another goal. Fight through adversity, because adversity will hit. This is how we're going to run our program. And we let the results take care of themselves. Now, what are you going to see on the floor? Offensively, and by the way, gentlemen, thank you for being here, and they've already heard this. So they're going to get excited about this side. So offensively, we're going to be an attacking team, an unselfish team, and an efficient team. Now, what do I mean by attacking? We're going to rebound the basketball. We're going to get up the floor, and they know that the first six to eight seconds belong to them. They are going to be able to, if, if they have a licensed shot from behind the three-point line, and they've proven they can make it, the first six to eight seconds, if they're open and they're on balance, they can take it. Now, I did tell them about licenses. Remember, licenses, you can have a regular license. You can have a restricted license. <laughs> and if you really go off the deep end, you can get your license revoked. <laughs> So that's the way we want to attack. Now, we're going to be unselfish. So that means that we're going to praise the assist more than we praise the score. And we're going to be efficient. We understand that turning the ball over doesn't help our team. So taking care of the basketball and battling the ball is going to be super important. Now, all that sounds great. And by the way, they were excited. I saw a couple smiles when we were talking in the locker room. But the reality is here, we're going to hang our hat on the defensive end of the floor. We're going to be an aggressive team, a disruptive team, and a dominant team. And it's funny, if you get those three, the three letters that start these three words, the first letter, they add up to ADD, add, addition. So if you can do that, that adds minutes to your time on the floor. What we want to do is make the, the impression we want to make is that our opponents just can't take any more of us. I don't want to play UNA. I don't want to play the Lions. Their tenacity, their aggressiveness is too much for us to handle. That's got to be the mindset of our team moving forward. I want to leave you with this. When we received the phone call from Mark Linder, my wife and I were at the Final Four in San Antonio. And uh, we were about to go get lunch. So we were kind of getting ready. And the phone rings, and it's Mark Linder. So obviously my wife, right to her praying. <laughs> um, and Mark gave us the news. So as we're getting ready, 
she looks at me and she says, lucky number seven. And I said, what do you mean? She goes, seven, in the 87 year history of UNA basketball, you're the lucky number seven coach. And I thought, wow, that's pretty cool. But as I thought more on it, I realized there's some more to this. I'm going to be the first coach to lead UNA into Division I. I'm not here to promise you wins. What I am here to promise you is that I'm going to give you my absolute best. That I promise. And I will never, ever take this historic honor for granted. Thank you, and roll, roll Lions. Yeah, well, at this time, we'll take any questions from our news media that are here. Just leave it. Yes. Absolutely, Jeff. Well, um, I'll tell you right now, the, the A-Sun is, uh, I'm familiar with it because of my time in Florida. Um, I'm very familiar with, obviously, Florida Gulf Coast and the success that they, they've had, uh, Stetson University, uh, University of North Florida, and Jacksonville. Uh, obviously, Lipscomb is a, is a program that has, has proven also, uh, uh, obviously, their coach has done a tremendous job. Um, you know, uh, I can tell you this, the one thing I know about the league is that it's going to be highly competitive. Um, it's got great coaches in it. I know Coach Driscoll very personally uh, at uh, North Florida. Obviously, now with the coaching change of, at FGCU, um, I don't know what's going to happen there, but uh, you can expect that they're going to bring in somebody that, that's going to continue that, that process. So uh, I think what it's going to take is uh, an understanding that our guys, uh, the, the level that they're walking into, is going to demand that they raise their level of game. And uh, that's going to be the way we're going to approach that. Hi, Greg. You're welcome to Times Daily. How are you doing, Greg? Good to meet you. Good to meet you. Nice to have you here. What makes UNA the right fit for you at this time? You know, that, that was one of the questions that was asked. And um, to me, this is really 27 years in the making. You know, um, my, my upbringing, uh, my, the early part of my coaching career, uh, it's, it's a humble beginning. You know, it's, it's, I was telling everybody that, you know, I remember my first day in the job at App State and one of the guys that I worked with said, man, you, you bypassed all this, uh, you know, you bypassed all this uh, chain, uh, you know, film exchange and, and uh, director of basketball operation, you went right to an assistant coach. I said, yeah, but for the last 12 years, I was the trainer, the bus driver, the the guy that did the laundry. Uh, so the schedule, you know, I was I was I, I ran the, the program. So to me, I think it's the the way that I'm going to be approaching my day to day is uh, I, I don't forget where I come from, and. Uh, like I said earlier about my parents, one of the things that they instilled in me, and, and by the way, when it, when it comes to adversity, I had a front row seat. You know, you're talking about people that didn't know the language, came here not knowing anybody. Um, it, it, it's, it'll humble you a little bit. So I think that's one of the reasons why I think I'm a good fit is simply because of my, my background. Any other questions? Tony, talk about the top players you want to bring in here? Um, well, n number one, the way we play. See, this is the great thing about college. Uh, when you're a high school coach, you know, you you coach in a district area, and those kids that live in that district go to your school, and that, that's the cards you're dealt. Well, at our, at our level, we get to pick the cards, right? So our style of play is going to be uh, for the athletic player, but a skilled player as well. We're looking for guys that are that can bring a skill set, but also play at the tempo that we want to play. So that's what we're focusing on is 
we want to play a game where it's up and down. We want to get we we want to get up and down the floor. So we're gonna we're gonna be focusing in on those type of individuals. Starts all nightmare for opponents. How do you do that? How do you get the fans filled here once a minute? Well, to me, number one, I think you gotta you gotta produce a good product on the floor. I think you gotta make the game exciting and fun for people to come and watch, and and we're gonna do that. That's the way we play. The other thing I think that's important is I think the community needs to to feel like they're a part of this because this is not this is not my team. This is not UNA. This is our team. This is everybody's team. So that's the that's the thing. I think when there needs to be that continued connection with the community to make sure that folks are coming out. And I plan to do that. Mixing and matching transfers with high school uh, recruits? Or? You know, I'm glad you mentioned that. I think for right now, we have to evaluate what we have here in the program. Uh, I, I've never been, I, I'm, I'm one that likes to build. So I, I'm, I'm one that wants to probably bring them in and, and have time here. Uh, I'm not one of the, I'm not a quick fix guy. Uh, that's not that's not our our brand. Our brand is going to be about building the program. 